Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Mac User and today on this screencast we're going to deal with making an external bootable hard drive. In one of my other videos um, I showed you the uh, technique of cloning using the software program called Carbon Copy Cloner uh, and, I, and I was using a bootable hard drive and uh, that's what led me to actually creating this video on how to create a bootable hard drive. And what I'm going to do is go through the process of actually doing three different operating systems for that bootable drive. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you need to identify is what year your Mac is. Because when you make these bootable drives, if you want to make some legacy drives, so say you want to make Mavericks or Yosemite, you've got to ensure that the Mac you're using can actually boot that operating system because the way the Macs are released and as you buy a new machine it is shipped with the latest operating system so if you had a machine that was bought in 2015 or 16 it would be very difficult if not impossible for you to install uh, Mavericks on that machine you might get away with Yosemite but I doubt very much you, you will so you've got to sort of select a, a, a machine if possible that can actually make the bootable drives. On my previous video when you saw all the operating systems up to El Capitan I used um, I used an old iMac for that one and I think it was a 2008 machine which, which can actually create all the bootable drives so I did every single Intel release from that. However I wasn't able to do Sierra because that iMac itself was not uh, isn't possible for that machine to run um, Sierra on it so I have to to create that particular boot drive um, the Sierra drive I have to find a machine that can actually run Sierra on, on it to allow me to install it so uh, enough of, enough of that let's uh, let's just go through into the screencast itself okay so I've got my hard drive I've plugged it in I've already formatted it before on the screen screencast um, and it's a 120 SSD so the first thing I need to do to split the drive is I need to go into utilities, so disk utilities. So we go to go menu down to utilities and then into disk utilities. I'm using Sierra on this particular machine, so it's slightly different to anything that was before, um, like Yosemite or something. El Capitan's when they changed it, changed the actual disk utility facility. So here we are. I'm going to partition my drive, and all I'm doing is using the plus sign to create my three partitions. And then all I'm going to do is label each of those partitions. It doesn't matter what you call them, as long as you can understand what it is. And I'm just calling it the name of the operating system and the actual particular build number that it was released with. So there you can see Yosemite 10.10, .10, El Capitan 10.11, and then uh, the final one, which will be Sierra. that will be 10.12 so those are my build numbers I'm just labeling the drive that particular way with the three partitions and once you're happy with that and you've got your three drives or five drives depending on what you how many operating systems you want to install on this external drive you click apply ensuring that Mac extended journal is on each each partition and then let it partition and then obviously it goes away this utility goes away and does uh, the splitting of the drive into three partitions and this will take probably about a couple of couple of minutes to do and when it does each drive it will it will obviously prompt you to see whether you want to use that the time machine and obviously you just cancel that particular option because you're not going to use this the time machine it is literally for an external hard drive so you can boot that clean system to whichever Mac you want to. And there it's done. So it's done the three drives. It's got it's done it all. Uh, it's given me the green tick. So I click done. And that is the disk utility option. And that's all I need to do for those particular bits. So the drives are formatted. Then I'm just going to highlight all of them and press Command I. And then they'll all, all come up, obviously showing the uh, how much data is actually on each drive. 
uh, on the split. So there you can see all three drives are ready to go. We now move into the process of obviously installing the operating system on the Macs. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use a bootable pen stick and we're going to boot the drive um, from the operating system. So uh, we're gonna, let's go to that particular screen now. Okay, so we've um, created our hard drives, um, we're ready to go. Um, there's one thing that I uh, have to uh, mention now is that um, you've got to create a USB bootable uh, drive with the operating system on it. Uh, I won't go into that video now, but I will post a link at the bottom of this video uh, to my website where um, you can actually see the terminal command that you use to create the USB drive. In, in short, you need about an 8 gig USB stick and then the installer that you download from the App Store using your Apple ID. So we'll assume that I've already done those uh, three USB sticks because I'm dealing with uh, um, the three operating systems here, so Yosemite, El Capitan and Sierra. And what we do very simply um, is we reboot the machine and when we reboot the machine um, we ensure that we are on the reboot that we press down on the alt key um, when you do the uh, reboot and that alt key will then prompt uh, to a navigation window which you'll see um, on this screen grab uh, apologies again for the imagery uh, to take photographs uh, for, uh, for, of my monitor um, with the different boot sequences but as you can see there it boots the external hard drive um, system and all the other drives that are capable to boot on that particular Mac and the option you need to select is the actual installer so if you plugged in um, Yosemite um, then you click on that one there if you have plugged in El Capitan you click on that installer and then obviously Sierra for the, uh, the final option there uh, and you go through the wizard, so it'll it'll do the boot. It'll boot from the USB stick. It'll take a couple of minutes to boot. Uh, once it boots, it comes up with a, a screen saying that you know the warning screen to install um, the software. And you obviously agree to the terms and conditions, which everybody obviously reads. Um, and then you just go through the process of selecting the hard drive um, that we formatted in the previous video. Uh, and then you just let it let it do it. So depending on how quick the um, the drive is, it depends on how quick it's going to install. So it could take 20 minutes, it could take 30 minutes. It just depends, and you just let it go through the process of installing. Uh, and once it's finished, it will then uh, appear uh, to the uh, startup screen like you do when you buy a brand new Mac. And then you then fill in your uh, login details that you want to do. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to sign your Apple ID or not. Um, and the machine. Um, or that particular boot system is then ready to go. Um, I personally don't assign an Apple ID to any of the, um, the drives that I'm using because these are obviously boot drives that are complete clean systems that are used to diagnose um, um, Macs that have uh, hardware or software issues. But you can assign an Apple ID if you want to. Uh, once you're in the machine, you can then obviously um, install whatever software, additional softwares that you think you're going to need for that particular boot drive. Uh, and there you have it. So um, you've got your three drives. It should take, you know, um, put, put down a day really for installing all three operating systems. Once each one is booted, you can then just check for updates from the Apple App Store uh, to ensure that you keep it up to date. Um, and you should then be good to go to boot to whichever sequence you want. Um, and that is how you uh, build, you know, um, a number of operating systems from an external hard drive so that you can boot to whichever operating system you require. Um, one thing is that if you want to boot to that drive, just remember that when you shut the machine down or you or you restart the machine, you must press the Alt key that gives you the option then to boot that particular um, hard drive in question. So that's the one thing you must must ensure. Anyway, that's uh, enough of this uh, screencast. Uh, sorry again about the imagery um, that I had to use for the photographs to select which drive it was. Um, if you've got any uh, questions or queries with it, then obviously you can comment uh, below uh, and check back later for another screencast. Uh, take care and have a great day.